All right. Uh, thank you all for being here on the afternoon. And um, let me first introduce myself. I'm Shipping Ong, uh, and uh, I run what is known as the Materials Virtual Lab at uh, UC San Diego. So this is we are a pure computational materials lab. And uh, for this work, uh, I'm going to talk about um, our project that is funded uh, under the SILOG uh, Advanced Energy Storage Program uh, on solid electrolytes with entropy-enhanced ionic conductivity and stability for high energy density lithium batteries. So uh, that's a mouthful. So this is a collaborative work that is uh, between us and uh, the group of uh, at, the, at the University of Florida. Uh, let me. So let me first uh, acknowledge uh, my team. So at uh, from my group, we are, we I have uh, Swastika Banerjee, who is a postdoc, uh, who is uh, a, a computational material scientist, who uh, does all the computational aspects of this uh, particular project, and. Um, we are actually collaborating with Florida State University, uh, the group of Professor Yin Yan Hu, who is actually uh, an NMR expert. Um, so uh, this project, uh, all the things that I've shown you, to, I've shown you today, is going to uh, are actually funded under this uh, SILOC uh, Advanced Energy Storage Program, and I just would like to acknowledge uh, computational resources that were provided by the Exceed uh, program here at the San Diego Supercomputing Center, as well as uh, the magnetic field laboratory at the uh, uh, Florida State. So um, in essence, in this project, we want to solve the big problems in energy storage. So uh, since uh, maybe not everyone is familiar with what are the big problems in energy storage, I would just like to share that first. So there are two very, very big problems in energy storage. And uh, both of them, we actually have heard a lot of news uh, over the years. Okay. So the first one is, of course, uh, quite obviously the issue of safety. Okay. So um, today's lithium-ion batteries are very, very powerful. It contains lots of energies, and it has enabled us to change our lives completely. But fundamentally, lithium-ion battery today is still very unsafe. Okay, so um, they have a tendency to uh, burst to, on fire whenever there's some, something goes wrong, and um, it has basically stopped airplanes. It has uh, cars have gone out in flames, and uh, we ideally we would like to avoid that. Okay. Now, the other problem in energy storage is, of course, um, something that has been brought to fore just uh, today. Okay? So there was this interview with Bill Gates, okay? and Bill Gates was like, well, I don't buy a Tesla because you know, I'm, still, I'm still worried about how far I can go on the Tesla. Okay? And of course, um, Elon Musk was not too happy about it, and he basically said that Bill Gates was underwhelming. Okay? So there's basically this spat going on between these two billionaires because they are uh, essentially, they don't agree on whether uh, we need more energy storage. So, but fundamentally, energy storage is not something that uh, energy density is not something that we uh, can have too much of. Okay, so whatever it is, we always want the maximum amount of energy in the smallest possible space or the smallest possible weight possible. Okay, so um, the technology that we are trying to develop is something that has garnered a lot of interest in recent years. Okay, so. And that is basically the all-solid-state battery. Now, um, this is fundamentally what a typical uh, lithium-ion battery looks like. Okay? You have two electrodes, the cathode and the anode. And in between, you have this uh, liquid electrolyte where you essentially move lithium ions in between the two electrodes through the electrolyte. And uh, in the process, you basically do uh, electrical work. All right? Now, most of the safety problems actually come from this middle part, okay? so, which is the electrolyte. It is uh, the electro electrolytes that are being used today are organic solvents, and those organic solvents are flammable. Okay, so in all solid state battery, essentially what we want to do is to basically replace this with uh, solid ceramic. Okay, and in the process, what we hope to achieve is, of course, um, since solids tend to be less state uh, less flammable than organic solvents, uh, we hope to improve the thermal safety. All right. Now, there are also other benefits to an all solid state architecture, uh, and that is basically that of um, energy density. All right? So, if we can, um, at, at the system level, uh, an all solid state architecture can allow you to achieve um, innovative stacking architectures, which actually can uh, improve packing and the energy density. All right? um, if your solid electrolyte is actually stable enough, you can actually. Um, 
stable to high voltages, you can actually enable certain uh, high voltage cathodes that people have worked on for the uh, many, many years. It's just that they have never been able to find an uh, uh, electrolyte that can support these high voltage cathodes, okay? So if you are able to support a high voltage cathode, naturally, again, your energy density uh, increases. And finally, uh, the holy grail of energy storage, uh, of lithium ion battery energy storage is essentially to go back to its roots, which is uh, we don't want to use graphite anymore, we want to use lithium metal. That achieves the highest possible energy storage uh, uh, at the anode side. And uh, we, for, for, for this to work, essentially we need uh, uh, something that can prevent the, dendrit, uh, the formation of lithium dendrites at the anode, okay? And, um, solid state uh, electrolytes are a potential uh, approach to uh, achieving that, all right? So um, the whole thing that makes this work is of course the, the thing in the middle, which is the solid electrolyte. And um, the problem here is of course that the design requirements for that solid electrolyte is uh, very, very stringent, okay? We need, uh, by definition, because uh, it, it has to move lithium ions to and fro, it needs to have a very high lithium ionic conductivity, uh, or what in the literature is called super ionic conductivity, okay, at least uh, 0.1 millisiemens per centimeter. Uh, as an electrolyte, it needs low electronic conductivity, it needs to be stable, of course, and uh, in order to have that nice high voltage cathode and uh, support a lithium, uh, close to lithium potential, we need good electrochemical stability uh, of, the solid, uh, of the solid electrolyte at both interfaces, okay. And Finally, unlike a liquid, obviously a solid, there are mechanical issues, right? You, you, do, the, the liquid uh, is, is, it doesn't flow. So essentially, mechanical compatibility then becomes a key consideration in the solid electrolyte. Now, to basically uh, try to attack to to attack this problem, uh, we are taking inspiration from a completely different space of materials. Okay, so. Um, so there has been a lot of interest in the alloy and ceramic space where people are looking at what are known as high entropy materials. Uh, high, entropy, high entropy materials essentially is uh, are materials where you essentially throw essentially five or six different types of elements together and hopefully they form a nice uh, solid solution like uh, single phase. And it has been found that these materials have a very, very interesting properties, at least in the uh, alloy and ceramic space, okay? So, for example, in uh, high entropy alloys, they tend to have much better mechanical strengths than uh, the typical alloys that people see, okay? Um, high entropy ceramics are a newer thing. Uh, yeah, they, they only have just been uh, discovered in the past two years, and it is still unclear what uh, benefits they confer, but at least in principle, people have found that they are uh, technically possible, okay? So, in our case, what we want to do is to see if we can also exploit the same principle. Essentially, can we actually, by putting many, many different elements together within the solid electrolyte material, can we actually achieve uh, all the things that we want in a solid electrolyte, okay? So, um, the, our key hypothesis is this. Basically, if we uh, try to mix the cation and anions uh, together uh, in uh, prototypical solid electrolyte materials, like uh, these two that, we, uh, that, that, that are being heavily investigated, um, we can actually create high entropy solid electrolytes, which, which will actually have a shallow energy landscape uh, that will actually have high ionic conductivity, okay? So um, I'm gonna focus mainly, uh, the rest of my talk is just going to be just on this particular solid electrolyte that we have uh, spent the uh, past one year working on, which is the argyrodite uh, LSX PF5, PS5 uh, CL or uh, bromine material, okay? And here, essentially, what we are going to do is that we are going to try to mix the anions and see, uh, investigate, essentially, what's the effect of that on the uh, conductivity of this material. So um, the main accomplishment in the past one year uh, is basically that we have managed to get um, bromine dope um, argyrodite electrolytes with uh, ionic conductivities that exceed uh, 10 millisiemens per centimeter, okay? And um, the way that this was done was basically we found that when you actually brought, uh, add bromine to this uh, solid electrolyte material, uh, what you do is that you actually create disorder in the anion sublattice, okay? 
And when we create disorder in the anion sublattice, what happens is that we also create disorder in the lithium sublattice. And what happens is that in the process, we see a sharp increase, decrease in the uh, activation barriers for diffusion in this material. And correspondingly, we see a two orders of magnitude increase in the ionic conductivity. Okay? So originally, the ionic conductivity was closer to 0.1 millisiemens per centimeter. By uh, mixing the anions, we actually managed to push it all the way up to about 10, uh, above 10 millisiemens per centimeter. Okay? Um, we also invest, um, of course, uh, th this is primarily a scientific project. So we, we spent a lot of time trying to understand why uh, this increase in conductivity occurs. Okay? So um, we look at uh, um, Yin Yin's group at uh, Florida State University, uh, experts in uh, NMR. They use uh, chlorine NMR to essentially look at the uh, site preference of the chlorine atoms. And essentially what, what, what they found was that um, the chlorine, instead of uh, continuing to sit on just one, mostly on one of the sites, which is the 4A sites, um, by introducing bromine, that bromine actually displaces that chlorine to the other anion site, and the chlorine atom essentially gets spread throughout the lattice. Okay? Um, we actually co corroborate this uh, NMR results with our DFT calculations that was done in my group, where we essentially look at the energy that it takes for chlorine to swap sites uh, between the uh, 4A and 4D sites, and essentially what we found was that with bromination, that energy decreases significantly. Okay? Um, in the process of that bromination, essentially what we also found was that uh, through lithium NMR, that uh, the lithium site gets disordered between two different sites as well. Uh, originally, most of the lithium is in the 48H site. And with bromination, essentially, we see that now the distribution becomes more evenly spread between uh, two of the lithium sites that are in the uh, crystal structure. And um, when we look at the lithium-lithium um, correlation, we essentially see that instead of these uh, sharp peaks in the um, in the lithium uh, order lithium-lithium uh, lithium distances, we essentially now get a more liquid-like uh, lithium distribution. Essentially, now lithium in this crystal structure behaves more like a liquid than like being uh, in in a uh, um, solid material. Okay, and that explains why the conductivity is so much higher. Okay. And um, we can also investigate this from ebony molecular dynamics uh, calculations. And um, again, uh, what we see is that um, uh, while the in, uh, we have these uh, lithium cages, which uh, have short-range diffusion, uh, this doesn't change regardless of uh, how much uh, we dope bromine. But essentially, when we actually introduce bromine into this material, uh, basically what happens is that we promote inter-cage diffusion, which actually results in, uh, which is the key factor in uh, long-range diffusion of uh, lithium in this uh, material, okay? And um, with that, I'm happy to take questions, and I, once again, I would like to thank Silog for the support, and uh, we, are, we have actually submitted an NSF proposal based on uh, the, the preliminary results that we've gotten here. We are actually writing this up in a journal article, so.